Welcome to a new Harry's Garage. And today is a bit of a special one because Footman James, a few weeks ago, set up a competition for people to enter so they could have their car featured in one of my videos. And I was amazed at the number of entries we got. We got well over a thousand entries and some great cars in there. And trying to choose the winner was really tricky. Um, Carrera GT was one. We had a convertible Citroen DS, which I was really tempted with, a Renault um, Alpine GTA, some real hero cars. But in the end, I chose this Porsche 928. And it's an early car, 1980 car, but it's a bit special, this one. The owner has done some great things to it. And if I introduce the owner, Joel, come and join me. Yeah, thank you very much Hi, for bringing it along. Thanks for having and, me. And uh, yeah, we're gonna have a tour around this car and I'll just show you some of the extra special points on it. And it's a hero car, any of mine, the 928. Came out in 1978. As I say, this one isn't quite stock. Well, Joel, tell me a little bit about the car. When did you buy this car? Bought it in 2008, so nine years ago. Quite some time ago, mm, yeah. yeah. And it had a, a bit of an interesting life right at the beginning, didn't it? Yes, it, it was parked outside my flat in London and we were unfortunately burgled and they, they took the keys, um, yeah. but what they didn't know was that the water pump had failed, so the car wasn't actually drivable. Oh. So they got about a mile down the road yeah. um, and just abandoned it. There was no damage to the car, but the engine was obviously completely seized. No. So it was written off, and um, I decided to buy the, the car back from the insurance company as a write-off yeah. for a couple of thousand pounds. Got a bit of money from them as well, and yeah. sort of set about um, turning it into kind of my perfect 928. So, it needed a new engine. I, I put an S-Spec engine in rather than the original 4.5. So, so this came out in 1978, yeah. didn't it? 928, yeah. 4.5 litre. I can remember at the time it wasn't quite powerful enough. No. It, was, you know, it was odd. It, it was, was the oil crisis. So yeah. the, the car was originally designed to have a 6 litre engine. Um, oh. And um, Porsche just dropped it to a 4.5 because of the, the fuel economy agenda at the time. In fact, some models yeah. even have an economy gauge on the dash, yeah. which is pretty crazy for a 4.5 litre V8. Yeah. Yeah, uh, so 240 horsepower to start out with the S version then in here. So what's the difference with this engine to what it's It's basically different cams, higher compression. Um, so it's not quite as smooth as it was, but you get a, a whole lot more power. So this, right. this one is about 320 bhp. Excellent. So it's a, it's a lot more nice. power and that's the power it needs really. Yeah. But it didn't stop there, did it? You thought, no. you know, yeah, once you've done the engine. I ought to just say, actually, um, there's a Storm Brian outside. It would be quite like to come inside his shed. So if you can hear it rattles like that, that's what's going on. We're going to venture out in a moment and hopefully the rain's all going to pass. But anyway, sorry, did, what have you done to this car? Did, so it went the, beyond yeah, yeah. the engine? The, en the engine went in and a few modifications to the engine as well, like a crank scraper kit and ridiculous things that um, I won't go into. But uh, once we've done the engine, we thought we'd better put brakes to stop it. So it's got big... Um, four pot S4 brakes from the 928 oh, really? S4. Um, it's got S4 suspension, um, so it's got um, uprated manifolds, completely custom exhaust system, um, new windscreen, um, full glass out, um, doors off respray. Right. I mean, you know how it is. Once, yeah. once you start, oh, a terrible thing. you, you yeah. can't yeah. stop. Yeah, well, it, I mean, it, the first bit, when you told me how much you paid for this car, I feel that was worth, yeah, that's just amazing. It just is another time, wasn't it? And it's a, yeah. pick these sort of cars the, up. The chap um, was, happened to live very near where, where I lived in West London in Ealing. He had yeah. it on piston heads for £3,995. I went oh, to see it. Yeah. I already had a manual 928, so um, I, did, I didn't oh, need another right. one. So I sent him a very polite email saying, I absolutely love your car, but how about two and a half grand? And I'm, don't, yeah. I, please don't mean to insult you. It was right. very polite. Yeah. And he said, 2,850 and you've got a deal. So I kind of had to That's buy amazing, it. That's amazing, isn't yeah. it? Just under 3,000 pounds. And it was working and it was fine. And it, it was, was fine. A, yeah. yeah, and it was a manual, which is really yes. critical with really. 9 to 8, isn't it? Because That's right. Because they were actually, my understanding, they were uh, automatic and a no-cost option was the manual gearbox on top. That's it? right. And, and most buyers went for an auto and um, the manual really changes the character of the car because yeah. essentially you've got a great big V8 up front, it's rear wheel drive, it's, very, um, it's a transaxle so the gearbox is at the back so it's 50-50 weight balance. Yeah. You put the manual gearbox in and suddenly you've almost got almost like a Porsche um, version of a muscle car. Yeah. Completely different car. Yeah. Anyway, I'm going to take you around just some of the details around the outside because I just love some of the uh, details on this car. Okay, starting at the front, the first thing you notice on a, a really early 928 like this one is it's lacking a sort of little lip front spoiler. Um, that rubber extension didn't come until the S and that was in 1980. Also had those very distinctive Mura like pop-up lights, so always on show, uh, really distinctive feature on it. And 
Porsches saw this as a potential 911 uh, replacement. They were struggling with um, 911, the, the emission um, rules are coming, the federal rules in the US were coming in, so they thought they needed a new car. So this was their front engine, all new, ground up design. And that's what makes it look so special. I mean, it was space age when it came out. I can remember seeing the first time, and, it, and you think we had XJS um, as a sort of rival for this car, and how sort of gawky that looked with its impact bumpers but Porsche came along showed the world how to do it with these um, special color with flexi paint they're amazing these bumpers if I just touch this you'll, you'll, these are actually soft and this was all new technology in 1978 and it so impressed um, the world that it gained this sticker that the um, Joel's had made up which is great the car of the year 1978 really the first time a sports car won car of the year European car of the year but it's a great design, a mix of aluminium and steel. My understanding it has alloy doors, front um, vent, uh, wings and bonnet um, to keep the weight, reduce the mass at the front and make this 50-50 balance that Porsche was so keen to keep. Um, particular favorite feature on this car is its interior with a Pasha trim, this Czech trim, so distinctive of Porsches of this era. Um, it's just worth having only one of these for, for just for the trim, as far as I'm concerned. Spectacular. And that manual gearbox, so crucial. It's different wheel on this car, but um, quite understandably. And when you adjust the wheel on this, the whole um, dash lifts up and goes with the wheel as well. Really modern at the time. Under here, aluminium hood feels really light. And look how far back that engine is in the engine bay. Porsche, again, trying to get that weight distribution right. Um, the front alloy. Uh, radiator and this bar here with electric motor here that's how you the lights go up and down one little trick feature that um, Joe's has told me about is this car has two washer uh, bottles to uh, clean the windscreen um, there's one filler up here and that is your conventional one um, that does general washing but if you want a stronger solution this little one down here uh, contains uh, a concentrate so you can add the concentrate to it if you have a really mucky screen and you need extra wash capacity so yeah typical Porsche attention to detail but lovely looking engine to say 4.7 it's very little difference between this and the early engine and at the rear some of the details I love here you see the 928 script uh, just in the window surround that disappeared on later models and if you look at this wiper um, you think well where's the mechanism for that if you lift it up and then you notice down here, well, they've actually put the wiper motor down here and this little linkage then powers the wiper itself. Other things you've got here, if I just uh, do this, you'll find a toolkit hidden away. And there's also a battery at the back and a, and a spare wheel as ever with Porsche. Really clever. And then also if you, you're not using the rear seats, there's a little lever here and the seats go down and you have quite a lot of space in the back of one of these right anyway what we really want to do is go drive this car so let's take it outside now so you, have to, you have to remember how old this car is isn't it so it's 79 yeah makes it 38 38 38 years old yeah, it's a V8 there, isn't it? Quite a big one. Yeah. Typical Porsche layout, the graphics. I don't know if anybody does it better, really, than just so clear. And I can tell, like, the first thing I'd notice, just one or two creaks, etc. because this is absolutely lined in leather, this cabin, isn't it? And you were, you're saying this is actually stitched as well. It's all hand-stitched leather, and on, on the very early cars, they all had this. And then yeah. they obviously figured out it was costing them a bit too much money. So when they when they brought the S out, uh, this became just plastic, and you could you could option it to be covered in leather, and they'd take about four thousand pounds off you. Wow. <laughs> so, so not many. Nice so not many of them had one. it. So it's, it's just a nice little extra touch of sort of luxury in these early ones. Oh, I ought to mention it's dog leg first as well on the gearbox. Yeah. We're in the third now, so we'll let listen. Yeah, yeah it's, a, it's quite a healthy car, isn't it? Yes. Yeah. Actually, it's a 
surprised it's quite long geared once you're into fifth though, isn't it? Yes. Yeah. It, it's 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 good for about 160, you know, the, the, the very top speed. Yes. I ought to point out you've been to Germany to try that out. I tried that out in Germany, yeah, yeah yes. on the A1. Yeah. I didn't, fact, get, I didn't get all the way there. In fact, I've seen a photograph of this actually on the Nürburgring, group, isn't it? You've yeah. done, done track days there. Many track well. days, yeah, many, tri many trips to, to Germany and you know, other places in Europe, and it's, it's just become a real companion car. Right. You, know, you just jump in and, and you sort of trust it to get you there. It's, it's never let me down, although I did once have to drive back from Germany with the battery in the passenger yeah, seat. You were saying that, I can't yeah. get over that. But you it's good to know that it will run. work without the battery. Yeah, who knew? Well, it's <laughs> that age of car. I see it's done 124,000 miles. Yep. So how many of those do you think you've put on? I think I've done about 25 of those, 25,000. Right. Okay. Yeah. Some some years I used it a lot, and then other years it's just been sat under a cover for a while, and you know you then something breaks and you yeah. leave well, it. You've done the rebuild, haven't you? Yeah. You've done. It's taken a while. It's, yeah. A lot, a lot of different things have gone on, and I've almost sold the car. Two or three times I've, I've got, I took the photos for the advert. Oh no! And then, Not that bad. Uh, you know, at one point I offered it to a friend of mine for eight thousand quid, and thank God he was like, "Oh no, it's not quite worth that much." It's not quite. No. Though. So I've, I've still got it, and uh, you yeah, know now. Well, I sense they're they're sort of coming into their own now. The uh, nine to eight, they was you know, sort of, well, not, I wouldn't say unfashionable, but they were slightly unloved. Yeah. Nine eleven is what you know people think of Porsche. But the way the 911's going, these are starting to look. Well, hang on a minute, I can get a 928 for half the price of a yeah. 911. Yeah. Well, they, they've, they've gone up a lot. I mean, even three or four years ago, you, you would really struggle to pay more than, say, 15 or 20,000 for the very, very best low mile example. Yeah. That's how unloved they were. And, and now, um, you know, probably a manual one like this, you know, in a nice up together early car would be about 20,000. If you want an S4, probably about the same. You pay more for a GT or a GTS, so maybe so 25 to up yeah. to say 40, 50. So good GTS manuals with low miles are now 50, 60. So still, I, I think, think value yeah. for money in the context of old Porsches. But it was those early ones when it first came out. It was you know a real change for Porsche. This was unknown territory yeah. for them. You know, doing front engine car. They built their history on the rear engine car. This narrow 911 and it was I think it's a really interesting time in the 70s because there was there was a slight behind the scenes of all manufacturers there was a slight panic because they just couldn't work out what was happening with legislation yep. and they needed to change and this it was almost going to be the death of sports cars I mean, we knew it um, and no convertibles they thought so yeah. it was a real yeah this this heralded a um, a new way of um, sports cars and then actually it all came good again and yeah. the 911 progressed and it became the 964 and um, yeah. I, I also I also think it was a real really special time for Porsche I mean in terms of the depth of engineering integrity and when, yeah. you, when you take one of these cars apart you really realize how special it is and and the, how well designed it is and the well, quality of the materials you know. yeah they were built like no other cars i yeah. think in the period you only had to own an xjs or put a 928 <laughs> beside it a minus sparda i wish that would be built by porsche yeah. uh, but it wasn't this is about 1500 kilos or thereabouts so a, bit, a bit less these early ones um, right. with the manual seats i think it's about 1400 right. the gts ballooned up to about 1550. But yeah, the, the, these ones I think about 1400 kilos. The seats feel good. They don't feel like they've worn out. No, they're but good, aren't they? Yeah, they're really good. I was trying to think, it half reminds me of, well, I can remember I had a 944. Uh, it's sort of like that, but then the sound sensation is all wrong. Yeah. Because it's, the trouble with the 944s in that period is that you know, it was the four cylinder engine, it just didn't have the charisma no. that the rest of the brand had. Why here? You know, we're very definitely V8. It's lovely. That's it. I, for me, a V8 is a special thing. You, know, it, it, you associate it with American muscle cars or great big you know, AMGs yeah. and things like that. And, and, and to have that inside a Porsche chassis, for me, was always yeah. a really special combination. Yeah. But you need the manual gearbox to unleash it. Yeah. Yeah. I just didn't realise, you know, 80% 
automatic. I had no idea it was that high. So fuel consumption. Tell me the, how bad Terrible. is it? Terrible. Yeah, it is. It's, it's in the teens, <laughs> isn't it? It's one of them. Uh, you can get 20 out of it if you, I drive, don't believe if you drive it like, you know, like, you, like there's an egg on the accelerator. If that, yeah, because you but normally it's 17 ish, isn't it? Uh, yeah, somewhere around there, somewhere yeah. around there. And on the Nurburgring, it was, uh, I didn't even bother to, <laughs> to look, it was probably gallons per mile. Yeah, it's funny, it's yeah, it's... You, you, can, you can get about 300 miles out of a tank, okay. so it's so it's a, it's a reasonably practical right. range, you know. Yeah, I like the idea of pushing bright LEDs in the dash because that is one area where. New cars have really come on, haven't they, and how that works, but... It yeah, just... it's about keeping the... You've got to keep the old school feel and treat it for what it is, but there are certain places, I think, where technology just got better. Yeah. So, you know, the, the all of the interior lights are, are LEDs, which but don't it, drain the battery. But it does feel, as though this was cutting edge in 78, you know, that idea of the dash moving with the steering wheel, uh, really, really nice. I love the wrap round and the vents, actually, in the door. Yeah, I'm trying to think, you know, of another car was that in this age. We've sort of seen it come in, in the future, you know, future cars, but I've not, I can't think of an earlier one. That's so advanced. Yeah, it's completely, it's com com completely advanced. And yeah. it, it, I think they, they had a wonderful bit of classic sort of 70s or 80s ad copywriting where they had a big print ad where um, they said, you know, some people ask why we put so much luxury into a sports car other people ask how can we make a luxury car so sporty you know that, yeah. uh, it, was, it was it was really supposed to be the the ultimate type of sports gt and then if you look i was looking at the prices of this and this car uh, new would have been about 22 or thereabouts and a, a, an xjs was about 19 and the Porsche um, 911 Turbo was about 27, 28. So I, I always thought it was more expensive than a 911. So it was more expensive than a standard 911. But the top Porsche was still the Turbo, actually, when this right. this car was out, which I didn't realise. So you actually, when you looked at the two together, you got this very simple 911, and you got all this tech and a new V8. They did price it quite aggressively, really. But, yeah. You know, I'd have thought it'd be considerably more than an XJS, but actually it was within 10% of an XJS. Oh, that's interesting, I didn't yeah. realise that. And then the um, Maserati Kazmin um, was another, Kamzin, sorry, that was another sort of rival to this car, and that was well up, that was in the 30,000 bracket at the same time. But, yeah. and, and don't forget, they made this car for 18 years. Yeah. They made it for a long time, you know, so over the course of its life, that's so good. Yeah, I'm not, I'm sorry, I'm in, I'm in fourth. <laughs> I should have chosen third and really would have listened to it. I'll we'll do that a bit further okay. there. Over the course of its life, it, the, the XJS was always a competitor. Then you had things like the BMW 8 series coming out yeah. in the 1990s. So the, 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 the GTS versus the 850 CSI was a great sort of uh, co a comparison. Yeah. Yeah, it's one of those cars that does live an awful long time. Well, Porsche have a history of it, but it's like, I, I, you, know, you know, I've got uh, the Countach. And that has a huge life, and everybody thinks they're all the same with Countach as the Countach, and it's not. It's sort of the same with the 98. Yeah. An early one, very clean looking, but 240 horsepower. It was only 7 points, so into 60 and 140 not miles an hour. It really does feel a bit flat. And it needs to have the S to really give it to what you expect yeah. a Porsche to behave like. Interesting spacing on the pedals, isn't it? It's yeah. really wide over, yeah. clutch right over there, and the brake and accelerator's good. Someone's thought about that. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> yeah, off we go. It's just so different from, from yeah. like, any other Porsche. It's so oh, different. Absolutely different. And, and just, and just a different flavour of yeah. Porsche. of that age when suspension used to move about. You yeah. actually had suspension. <clears throat> it's double wishbones all round, so again, yeah. the 911 was still on a what a torsion bar and really quite a primitive oh, suspension. God. This was Absolutely. this was you know a setup that's exactly the same as the SLS from 
you know, five years ago. Yeah. yeah. Well, and the rear steer introduction of the white axle on this yeah. car was the first and feature of that idea. It, that was all about safety and stability at very high speeds, you know, to make the car just as, as, as safe with the performance it had um, as, as it could possibly be. And you know, as we were saying earlier, a lot of that stuff came over to the 911 in later years. It's all quite small tires, isn't it? 16 inch rims. 16 inch 225 section on, on, the, on the S. And then they kind of got a bit fatter with the, when the S4 came out. Um, and then the GTS got, wait for it, 17 inch rims. <laughs> It's still kind of, as you say, brake feels terrific, solid yeah. pedal. Yeah. This one I call a rouge coming through here. It's an interesting camber, isn't it, there? Yeah, it is. And it all goes like wrong here. <laughs> Yeah, they did. There, were, there was um, there were a couple of cars that were sort of not quite factory supported, but uh, I think there was a um, was it Max Moritz, some dealer in Germany that, that had that had. They'd definitely been in the right. in the VLN, um, you know, and uh, uh, really successfully as well. And there are a couple of there are a few cars racing in the UK now in you know club racing series, but. Um, it was it was never allowed by the factory to, to get anywhere near the you know the 911 racing effort that was not on the agenda. Right. Well, it would always have the weight disadvantages from yeah. it against the 911. Yeah. Um, so it was always seen as their GT car. And it got pretty quick by the end, wasn't it? Well, another another interesting little. Thing is that they used to give them to their works um, drivers. So Derek Bell had one. Was given was given a, a, nine, a 928 Club Sport prototype as his as his company car. Oh, right. um, and Hans Stuck had one. You know, so the factory used to kind of this was their sort of um, standard issue for their for their works drivers. I think yeah, Hans Stuck actually blew his up on the autobahn. Oh, did yeah, hit the limiter. Another good reason to be a works driver for Porsche if you didn't need one. Yeah. Pleasure, yeah, Harry. No it's been it's been huge fun. Yeah. Well, if you enjoyed this video, keep watching, keep subscribing. More videos coming on very soon.